the introduction and also for the invitation to come and speak uh, to you this afternoon. So I'm going to talk about the work we're doing at the Met Office to develop a new JEDI-based land surface DA system. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Brett, Christina and Lorenzo, who are key contributors to this work. So a quick outline of my talk. I'm going to uh, start by giving you a very quick overview of our current operational land surface DA system um, and highlight some of its key limitations. I'll then go on to introduce you to Momentum, which is our next generation modeling systems framework and the way that we're gonna use JEDI within that. And then I'll move on to talk about our plans uh, for using JEDI for land surface DA. Uh, the motivation behind it, the overall strategy, and the plans and progress on developing a new LSDA system for our global NWP. So let's start by taking a look at our current system. The schematic here shows the DA processes for the land and the atmosphere in our current global NWP system. Our land surface model is joules, and that's internally coupled uh, within our with our atmospheric model. So um, between them, they provide a coupled model background uh, state to the land and atmosphere DA systems. Our land surface DA system is called SURF, um, and it has separate components for analyzing snow and uh, soil state and surface temperature. So for the soil, we use a simplified extended Kármán filter to analyze the soil moisture and soil snow and surface temperature on grid point columns. Uh, and this uses observations of soil wetness from the ASCAT instrument um, on the METOP satellites. And it also uses screen level temperature and humidity pseudo observations. And these are in fact, um, gridded analysis increments that are output from a separate uh, 3D VAR screen analysis. Um, Jacobians for the SEKF are derived from a set of standalone jewels, um, perturbed simulations shown by this pink box here. Um, the snow analysis is actually done differently in our global and UK systems. The global uses a really simple update scheme uh, to give a daily snow amount analysis, and that's using observations from the NESDIS IMS Northern Hemisphere snow cover product. Whereas the UK has a 2D optimal interpolation that runs four times a day, and that uses station snow depth reports um, from the SINOP network, along with severe based snow cover product to analyze snow amount. So as you can see from the schematic, um, this results in quite a complex set of components that make up our LSDA process. And it's, it, it really includes everything inside this kind of dotted line here. So you can probably start to get an idea of some of the limitations uh, of our current system. On the technical side, there's a really high level of system complexity. It's not flexible. It's really hard to add new observations or analysis variables. And actually, the, this standalone Jules runs adds um, quite a significant computational burden in the operational workflow. And then on the scientific side, the different methods uh, are operating largely independently from each other. So we're not analyzing the land surface variables in a consistent way. Um, the global snow analysis, as you saw, is, is really basic and long overdue an upgrade. And another key problem is that the system is not set up to work um, with an ensemble prediction system. The SEKF can actually can't be run on each ensemble member because we'd need to run a separate um, set of standalone perturbed jewels uh, simulations for every ensemble member, and that's just too expensive. So the time is right um, to rethink our land surface DA, and that's because there are big changes going on at the Met Office for NWP. Uh, we're in the midst of a massive program to redesign our complete weather and climate systems to equip us for uh, future generations of supercomputer. And the kind of what comes out of that, the resulting uh, framework will be called uh, Momentum. Now, two of the key elements uh, of this for NWP are a new numerical model uh, known as ELFRIC uh, and a new JEDI-based observation processing and DA system. 
Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to talk any more about Elfric today, but I've put a few details there on the slide if you want to go back and have a look at those later. Um, I'm going to focus on the JEDI uh, observation processing in DA. So JEDI, which is developed by the uh, JCSDA in the US and its partners, that gives us a generic model agnostic framework that consists of I guess a series of, of abstract layers, a bit like Lego blocks, um, to perform specific tasks such as elements of the quality control, observation operators, different model interfaces so that we can plumb in different models um, and also the different DA methods. We can then use configuration files that are a bit like recipes to specify how you want to put those Lego blocks together to build your specific application that you want to run. So we're developing two, two overall applications, the JOPO, um, which is to carry out the observation processing um, before, the, uh, before you feed the observations into the DA cycle, and then the JADA, which is, is the application that's actually carrying out the DA. And we're building these for, for mainly for the atmosphere, some of the aspects of the ocean, and the work's going well. That's really well advanced on those aspects. So um, back in 2021, a little while ago, we, we decided that we would also use JEDI for our next generation land surface DA. Um, that's going to give us a common infrastructure for the atmosphere and the land surface DA. And we think you know, that's a key requisite for being able to build and evolve more strongly coupled DA. But alongside that, it's also going to mean we can share the expertise that we've built um, around JEDI. We have streamlined system maintenance. We can also build on the existing capabilities that have been developed for the atmosphere. The modularity of JEDI means that it's going to be much easier to incorporate new observations, observation operators, try out different DA schemes. Um, and we also have new collaboration opportunities um, to collaborate with JCSDA partners that are also using JEDI, uh, for instance, NOAA. So um, let's have a look at what we're planning. Uh, in this slide, I'll talk about our overall strategy. Uh, in the next one, we'll look at some more specific plans. So you'll remember I showed you a schematic earlier of our current rather complicated land surface DA system. Um, the schematic here is really what we what we'd like a lot more what we'd like to aim for. So a much simpler, more streamlined system. First of all, we want um, a harmonised approach with a single uh, multivariate uh, analysis rather than different methods for different variables. Um, that can be easily extended, and that should give us a much more consistent treatment of the surface variables, but also reduces the system complexity, it's easy to maintain, uh, increases the flexibility. We want to align our uh, land surface DA better with the other Earth system components. Um, so by using and, and extending JOPA for our observation processing, that means we'll end up with one single observation processing system for the four main Earth system components. Um, but even more importantly, we want to align the DA with the atmosphere DA to facilitate future stronger coupling. So we want to use the same family of DA method as the atmosphere, because um, that's going to make it a lot easier to begin to be able to exchange information between the Earth system components during the DA. And that's what these orange arrows are, are showing. Um, we're also going to base the system around being part of an ensemble prediction system from the start. So we we'll use an ensemble DA technique uh, to provide a land surface initial state for each ensemble member. And we'll also use the ensemble to give us information for the background error covariances. And finally, we're going to develop um, land surface DA for both global and the UK systems. Uh, there is a requirement for both, but we're going to focus on the global first because uh, we can't do everything at once. So on to some more uh, specific plans for our global NWP system. We're going to use an ensemble of 3D VARs. Um, our 
Global Atmosphere DA uses hybrid 4D VAR, so that means we're able to use a, you know, a method that's in the same family. Um, and we'll start off using, trying to use ensemble-based uh, background error covariances. For our initial system, we're going to use observations from uh, screen temperature and humidity, the ASCAT soil wetness product, station snow depth, and IMS snow cover product, and aim to analyze soil moisture and soil temperature, skin temperature, snow temperature, and snow amount. So the same kind of variables that we're currently analyzing. Um, in terms of performance, we need to at least match uh, the current operational uh, land surface DA in terms of the impact it has on our N NWP. Um, we've done some data denial experiments uh, with our current system to establish uh, a benchmark for how much the uh, land surface DA is currently contributing to NWP performance. But we'll also be looking at the quality of the analyses um, through a selection of case study periods in different geographical regions. So um, finally, I'll just say a little bit about the expected timeline and how we're going about this. Uh, so we split the project into three phases. Phase one is uh, the green line is called Jopa land. That's in progress now, and that's the work to develop the land surface observation processing in Jopa. Uh, we're currently working on the ASCAT soil wetness, and we've just started um, on the station snow depth obs. Phase two uh, on the blue line, it's called Jada land. That's going to start next year, and that will be uh, the work to develop the 3D VAR EDA. And then finally, phase three is uh, in orange is the extended testing and tuning that's needed in preparation for handover for operational implementation. So we're targeting operational implementation about a year after the global atmosphere Jedi based DA goes in. Uh, for context, it shows, shows the kind of timeline of the main operational upgrades for the new components. The, the new model uh, is, is due to go in in the parallel suite upgrade 49, which is about 2027 at the moment. The new uh, global atmospheric DA uh, the following year in PS50, and then the new land surface DA in the following upgrade about a year later. And just to say that all this time we're developing this, we have to continue uh, to provide land surface DA and operations from the surf system. So there's some continued maintenance and support there. And I will leave you with that slide and 